Thank you for visiting Pastor Wyatt TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWyatt.com. The sure bet coffee play today, which is actually in race eight. I like number one, Francisco Clemente, who I believe should have won last time out in California. Uh, was on the inside, swung very wide, finished very well, was probably best that day, but I think we see an even better race from him today. Down the center, Francesco Clemente. He's trying to shift in, but he's shifting gears. And here he comes now, Francesco Clemente front and center and going away to win the McKnight. We're going to see a very special filly um, in Warm Heart who is just nothing, nothing but talent. I don't believe, in my opinion, Shug's horse that a lot of people are high on has the seasoning to handle her at this particular point, although he may go on to be a really good horse. Today is today and the future is the future. Here's Warm Heart. She got through at the rail. What a ride, and Warm Heart has hit the front. The globe trotting Warm Heart is clear. Outside, I'm very busy, charging hard late. Warm Heart wins the Pegasus World Cup turn. If there was ever a race, in my opinion, that pace makes the race, this year, it's the Pegasus World Cup. Senior Buscador is a horse that I think can definitely slip into the triples, superfectors, maybe even the exacta. And if something crazy happens and we get a pace meltdown, I think Junior Alvarado is an underrated, very strong finisher. And I think that horse can definitely surprise people and, 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 and make some noise late. Takes aim on the outside. They come past the eight pole. On the inside, it's still National Treasure holding on. Down the center, Senor Buscador is running out of time. National Treasure would not be denied. Ciao, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Past the Wire TV. What we got today is our Pegasus World Cup takeaways, uh, some accolades for our Sure Bet Coffee plays of the day, which uh, are starting a little streak. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit of football, a little bit of uh, racing marketing or the lack thereof. And I think you'll enjoy the show. So hang tight. We'll be back in a minute. And if you are not watching Pass the Wire TV, why? Thank you for visiting Past the Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWire.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, I think we'll uh, have some fun with this one, and uh, we got we got kind of a lot to talk about. This is our Pegasus World Cup takeaway show. Uh, and there were quite a few takeaways. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk a little uh, racetrack marketing, lack thereof, uh, a little pick six, a little short bet coffee plays, uh, even a little football we're going to mix in there. So it should be a, a, an interesting show. And uh, it was certainly uh, a fun day. Of, of racing at, at Gulfstream Park this past Saturday. Uh, 
great atmosphere, great vibe, a uh, lot of fun, and you know, a really great card. Followed by a super tough, different type of card, but super tough card on Sunday for the mandatory pick six payout, which uh, we'll talk a little bit about. Uh, came back a nice one point eight million dollars, and it, if you hit it. You certainly deserved it. There's one uh, gentleman on Twitter that did hit it on a $300 plus ticket that they posted before the races and after the races. And uh, congratulations to, to to that person. I, I believe his name is Luis. I'm not sure. I don't know him, but did, I, I did see the ticket posted and he did a hell of a job uh, and shared it with everybody on there. So kudos to him. That's a, a heck of a nice score. Uh, Pegasus World Cup Day. Uh, I will say this about, about the Pegasus this year. I've been to every one except I think, uh, the COVID, the COVID year. Uh, I might've missed one other one. I don't think so though, but I've been to just about every one. I was definitely at the first one. That's all another story in and of itself. Uh, some of you that are close to me know it. Some of you don't, uh, one day I'll tell that story. Uh, not today. I will say that uh, as far as just my own observation for what, what it's worth, it seemed to be the least crowded uh, Pegasus World Cup that I have ever been to. Um, just didn't seem, seem crowded at all. It was certainly uh, not crowded and, and, and did not look sold out in the silks room. There were a lot of empty seats. Uh, I walked through there to say hello to some friends that are, 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 are tellers there. Uh, and it just uh, um, wasn't crowded at all. You could walk up to the window during any of the races and, you know, make a bet right there. And I get a lot of people are betting on their phones and stuff, but uh, didn't seem crowded at all. Uh, but it was a good atmosphere. Uh Always, always good to see some some friends at the racetrack. Uh, and, uh, you know, one thing about going to the races, it's always a lot more fun when you're right and you win and you have a good day. And uh, we, we got a little lucky with that on Saturday. We did pretty well. So uh, all good. You know, I got I to gotta give the first, first shout out um, and the first takeaway to R Ramiro Restrepo. Uh, last year on the Pegasus undercard, I believe in the same race, the second race on the card, he debuted Mage, uh, who went on to win the Kentucky Derby, as most of you know. Ramiro almost did it again. He, he debuted a horse, uh, an arrogant three-year-old colt in the second race, uh, again, uh, trained by Gustavo Delgado, horse's name was victory avenue took a lot of money in the betting was a little bit of buzz about the horse and i had said to some friends of mine i says you know imagine this horse wins again the odds of winning the second race with a, a, a maiden in a maiden special weight race like, like like you see on pegasus day uh back to back years odds odds are, are, are pretty astronomical especially for a small barn like ramiro's that doesn't have you, you know 40 horses in the shed row uh, and if the horse ever went on to win the Kentucky Derby and lightning strike twice, uh, the odds got to be what? A couple of billion to one, maybe? <laughs> I don't I don't know. I, I'm not good, good enough odds maker to come up with, with, with those odds, but they are astronomical. Victory Avenue showed a ton of speed, was on the inside, uh, you, you know, did get beat late, but ran a hell of a race to stay in the fight the whole way. And when was pa when was when, when he was passed on the outside, you know, there's a lot of fast horses, and he showed that he was a fast horse. He went right to the lead. He, he set fast fractions. It, it came back a fast race on the card, and he fought back on the inside, and 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 that impressed me more than the time because you know for a first time starter to show that heart and 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 you know show guts to fight back um after being passed that's that's talent you know there's a lot of fast horses but there's not a lot of fast horses with fight and heart and guts and you know heart is something that you've either got it or you don't you can't teach it you know you either you know you know it's there 
or it's not, you know, and uh, with Victory Avenue, I'm excited to see him, you know, again. Uh, we did have Ramiro on the show, uh, I think it was the day before the race, and, you know, he spoke a little bit about, about Victory Avenue, and, you know, he, he wasn't as advanced and as mentally and physically ready uh, as Mage was the year before, but he still ran a heck of a race, extremely credible, showed a lot of promise, a lot, a, a lot of potential, and I'm, ex I'm excited for him, uh, and uh, we'll see, we'll see, you know, see where he goes. Uh, the racing was great all day. I mean, there, there's, 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 there's no question about that. But we're not going to talk about them all because I don't want to bore anybody. But we will talk about the three uh, Pegasus races. Okay, uh, we'll mention another one quickly before that because I think it's worth mentioning, and that was the La Provayant. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, the the William McKnight which was won by Francesco Clemente, who was the Surebet Coffee Play of the Day. Uh, last two Surebet Coffee Plays of the Day, which are on Past the Wire TV, usually on Saturdays, both won. Now, Francisco Clemente only paid, you know, 6000 and change. He was 2-1 to one in, what, a 12-horse a full field. But that's not the point. The point is, and 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 this happened twice on Saturday. You know, nobody's going to get a high, you know all excited and toot, toot, toot their horn about a two to one shot. But a win is a win, and this is a horse that really, in my opinion, in that field, even though there were twelve horses, should have been four to five, even three to five. I mean, he he he, in my opinion, absolutely laid over the field. He was sitting on a peak race. Um, and then in my opinion, there was really, really not much that can beat him. One of the things that could have beat him, even though he came from way off the pace, you know, he figured to inhale those horses regardless of, of how they ran the race. And he did. But the only thing that, that could beat him is sometimes when a horse makes a big move from off the pace like that in the stretch, they'll have a tendency to kind of lug in and, 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 and try and get in. And he was doing that, and he needed all of Irad Ortiz's strength and guidance to get to get to get home on top and ultimately get clear and draw away, which he did. Uh, and you know, shout out Chad Brown had him ready to peak, and uh, Irad, man, I, what he went four or five races, I don't even know, but he was on fire. I mean, we've talked about it before on this show. He just shows up on the big days with that game face and just rides in, in a domineering fashion that reminds me of uh, the days of uh, Angel Cordero when he was just, you know, dominant force uh, in New York on the big days when New York was kind of like the, you know, the best racing in the country back then. So, I mean, that that, that was an impressive race. We, we loved him. We bet him. Uh, and uh, he delivered, and those short bet coffee plays of the day. Uh, we had a good start, we got a little cold, and then we uh, hopefully turned it around with back to back winners. Uh, we'll try and keep it going, you know. In the first of the three Pegasus races, which we'll talk about, um, the Philly race. Uh, I, I, I thought that was an interestingly run race. I didn't figure the horses that were on the lead uh, to be on the lead. I thought the pace was going to be, you know, you know, relatively what it was, but different horses setting it. Um, I thought Ruby Nell was going to be close. I thought Queen Goddess was going to be close or, or, you know, one of them was, was going to be on the lead. Uh, it didn't actually turn out that way, but, you know, Didier, ran a very very big race was dead game through the lane on the irad's brother jose ortiz who can also ride lights out on 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 these big days um surprisingly ran a huge race on the ocean murphy uh trying to rally up the inside uh couldn't do it couldn't get to didia i don't i don't i don't think she's as good as didia but didia you know doesn't get the respect of as 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 you know, being a top grade one uh, type mare. But when she shows up and she shows up more often than not, uh, she brings it, you know, she really does. 
So kudos to her. Uh, I think they've done a phenomenal job with her. She's she's rock solid, steady as a rock, and she showed up on Saturday big time. It's a little late in the day. We're not drinking short bed coffee right now, but we did this morning. You can count on that. <clears throat> Next race we're going to talk about, and what's worth talking about in, in this one is the Pegasus World Cup turf. And I got to say, in my opinion, <coughs> in this particular race, if you go head to head with two particular horses, you probably had the worst betting and the worst line that I could ever in my entire life recall. Um, making integration, even money, four to five against warm heart um, was insanity. Um, integration at this point, and you know, we're talking about today, we're not talking about six months from now or next year and warm heart retired after the race anyway, but on Saturday, integration was not in warm hearts league. Uh, no way. And to take that horse on to come at four to five over that Philly, uh, insanity, um, two to one, she paid six eighty, almost five to two. Um, against four to five uh, on that other horse was probably um, the worst comparison, uh, just the worst offshoot odds that I, 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 I can I can remember. I mean, whoever bet that way, I mean, that was one time the public was dead wrong. I knew it going in. I said it to the people that I was sitting with that this is is absolute insanity. I didn't think there was any way that warm heart could lose. Uh, and I bet the race that way. Now it was interesting because I was fortunate. I used two horses for second. Uh, and they ran they 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 ran that way. I used the four and the twelve. Um, I bet the twelve for more, and the twelve was forty-five to one. So I had nine twelve for more than I had nine four, and it looked like it was going to be nine twelve until very late. It came nine four, but the four was a big price too. I think she, she, he, he was like fifteen to one, so that got home. And I will say this: uh, Coolmore, Aiden O'Brien, the lads, as they are referred to, and especially on on Saturday and a lot of big days, Ryan Moore. Um, that was as flawless a ride as I have ever seen in my entire life. And I've been watching races a long time. Um, there's been a lot of great rides. That's up there with the best of them. Uh, what I thought could get warm heartbeat was uh, two things. One was it was a mile and an eighth, and that might might have been a little short for her. And when they come out of the gate, and she was right there, um, and then dropped back in kind of the uh, garden spot, just sitting right off the pace, I knew she was close enough, and she was doing it easily enough. So after about an eighth of a mile, I said, the distance is not going to beat her. The only thing can beat her is Ryan likes to sit on the rail and will sit on the rail and has that cool hand loop mentality of just sitting waiting, 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 picking his spot, getting through on the inside, waiting until that horse drifts a little bit, whoever's on the lead, whoever's in front of him, drifts a little bit, usually turning for home and slips through that rail. Sometimes they drift or get out, move out a little bit after they turn for home or a little bit before. He knows when exactly to push that button every time. Um, and I think he knows it mentally, cerebrally, because he's, he's such a cerebral rider. He knows it visually because he sees what's happening in front of him. And I believe he knows it instinctively. Uh, the guy was amazing. That was just as, as many as I read one and as dominant as he was, the ride of the day and weekend absolutely goes to Ryan Moore on Warm Heart. That was what you call flawless. Uh, that was just beautiful, um, which takes us to the Pegasus World Cup. Um, you know, it was funny. I, 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 I knew that 
pace was going to decide who won that race more than trip more than any, a, 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 anything else uh and i think ultimately it did um i also knew and if you're watching um past the wire tv and you watched the thoroughgraph show by the the, the the pegasus world cup by the thoroughgraph numbers and patterns which we do for a lot of the big races and we've nailed so many of them i leaned more towards national treasure um and senior buscador running a big race and getting in the money uh come race day uh and game time decisions i kind of felt that uh brad cox's horse was going to step up and i and, and i knew he was you, you know slower than the rest of them first mission and, and had to really step up and run two to three points faster than he ever had uh, in order to win, but I thought the trip and the pace might favor him a little bit, uh, but it didn't work out that way. But uh, the way I played it worked out very, very, very well, but that that's not the point. The point is um, the Thurgraph show was spot on. Um, if you're not watching those shows, why? They're great. Um, you'll love them. Just look, go back and look at it now. Uh, look at the comments and, 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 uh, you know, if, if, if so inclined on, 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 on the comments of this show, and if there's any show you want, you want any race, you want me to do the thoroughgraphs on, uh, let me know, uh, put it in the comments and we'll try and get it done. Uh, cause that's what we like to do. It just, just spot on, but, uh, it's not. Who's got the fastest number? It's all in the patterns. Now, that said, I knew in my heart that National Treasure had been sitting on a big race since I saw him at the Breeders' Cup as a two-year-old. Uh, he won the Preakness, but he never delivered that race he had in him. He kind of delivered it in the Breeders' Cup mile, ran huge, lost to the horse of the year, Cody's Wish, uh, but gave Cody's yeah. Wish all he wanted and all he could handle. But I knew he could sit off a horse, too. Uh, I didn't think Hoist the Gold was going to get the distance, and I, I, I thought he was going to regress uh, all, all, off the last race. But, I, I mean, Pratt rode a flawless race, as did Ryan Moore. Not quite on that level, but rode a, a flawless race on national treasure. He had Hoist the Gold in his sights, measured the entire way, and had enough off the horse that I keyed in the superfectors and the triples uh at a, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a bigger price senior buscador who we said was gonna um you know run big and show up and make noise in the stretch and he certainly did uh he ran a big 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 race but you know on those big days we know nobody beats bob i mean he 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 shows up on 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 the big days uh and national treasure was ready to run a huge race and he absolutely certainly did uh you, you, you know it, 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 it was it was rewarding for me because if you watched the triple crown thoroughgraph shows last year um you know how high i was on national treasure in the preakness uh and even though he won he didn't deliver the kind of number that you know i i i thought he would um i didn't like him in the belmont i didn't like him in any other race until he lost the Breeders' Cup. I liked him in the Breeders' Cup mile. I used him in against Cody's Wish in the Breeders' Cup mile. And I used him on Saturday as well. Um, but uh, that was a, a, a heck of a race. And, uh, you know, what can you say? Just a, a really great, exciting rendition of the Pegasus World Cup. Uh can't beat it with a stick. I mean, it was just, uh, just, just, just a great race. Now, uh, moving right along, you know, they brought in some well-known social influencer uh, to uh, market, promote, create buzz, create excitement about the Pegasus, okay, and World Cup Day. And I guess that that she did. I apologize. I don't know her name. Most of you probably will, um, but I don't follow really, you know, influences for, for, the, for that much. Although I did get a chance to meet um, Boss Stool Stool President Dave Portnoy. Took a picture with him. Super nice guy. Um, very enthusiastic about racing. We'll get to him in a minute. Uh, but this this other um, 
uh, lady, a social influencer, you know, generated a lot of buzz. I understand she was at the carousel, a lot of videos, but you know, do, 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 do those videos and does that exposure uh, create new fans, new players, um, or, you know, is that going to make people, you know, open up ADW accounts, start wagering, start, wa start watching races and show up at Gulfstream on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or even next Saturday for the Holy Bull? Um, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I, I don't think that's the right demographic that we should be going after. And I don't think that's the right form of promotion of the sport to gain new uh, fans because, what our fans are, at the end of the day, really, are gamblers, okay? Uh, so I think more has to be done to promote the gambling and skill aspect of the game. I was a professional player for a long time, so I know the skill, sacrifice, and dedication that it takes to beat this game over a period of time. And I don't mean just grind out you know, a, a positive ROI. I mean, beat the game to sustain your lifestyle and, and you, you know, support yourself. It ain't easy. Uh, so, you, you, you know, the game and the chance of making money and, 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 and participating in a skill game and beating people at a paramutual game where you're playing against the other people there, that competitiveness, that's what I think really needs to be tapped on and marketed uh, and gone after. Now, it, it brought back and some conversations on, 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 on social media and, and Twitter specifically, or X, whatever it is now, X, I guess, uh, <clears throat> reminded me of some interesting times years ago that I will share. Um, and I understand the same thing happened at, at Hollywood Park, but I wasn't there for that. So I'll talk about what I saw firsthand. Uh, the old Gulfstream Park, which I loved, was a phenomenal facility, um, much bigger than this Gulfstream Park, not as modern and, you know, totally different type of, of place. But the old Gulfstream Park, <clears throat> when I think the Dons, the Don family still owned it um, at that point, uh, tried to... Uh, bring in newer, younger fans by having concerts in the park area that was pretty, pretty, pretty much, you know, across the, the grass away from the, the paddock. But the music was so loud that it used to upset some of the horses in the paddock, especially maidens and first time starters. And if if memory serves correct, I think once John Kimmel, who had a pretty big stable and a powerful stable at that time with a lot of good horses, uh, actually had to scratch a horse because the horse got so upset and acted up so much because of the music. Uh, it wasn't a good idea, but they did it anyway. And to get people to come in, what they did was they would give people that went to the concert free $1, $2, $5, and $10 vouchers to go make bets after the concerts, okay? <clears throat> That's not what happened. What happened was these people used to throw the vouchers away, come in, have a couple of drinks, watch the concert, and leave. And what they used to call stupors back then, which were people that the racetrack was a whole different vibe. Nobody was betting on phones or anything like that. Uh, you bet wasn't even out yet. And if you don't know what you bet is, you don't know about this stuff. So you bet wasn't even out yet. So <clears throat> people stupors used to walk around they were that's what they were called and pick up thrown away tickets and look for scratches or um disqualifications or you know winning tickets that people mistakenly discarded and they would find them on the floor uh what they used to do after the concerts was walk around the park area where the concerts were and pick up the vouchers these people weren't even betting with free vouchers. And that's how I see, and I hope I'm wrong. I don't want to be right, but I'm pretty sure I am. But I hope I'm wrong. I see the demographic that this uh, social media influencer reaches out to the same way. I think they're more interested in her outfit, her jokes, her cocktails, her her you know, what outfit am I going to wear, whatever, um, who's here today, what stars can we say hello to, um, then actually handicapping the pick five or the super factor and making a score. That's how I see it. I hope I'm wrong. I think that to 
market the game. Now, now, interestingly, I happen to, I don't know, I don't know, you know how social media and Google and all of these things track you. Like if you're, you know, searching for a new Corvette online, the next thing you know, on Facebook, on this, on that, on everything, and ads will come up for Corvette dealerships all over the place. That's just the way it is. They can use cookies. They track everything that you do, know everything that you do. Even if they say they don't, they do. Talk about something. Uh, and you'll see it'll start coming up on your social media or in your Google. There'll be ads for, for whatever it is you're talking about. Uh, <clears throat> David Portnoy, Stool Presidente, the guy who, who owns and runs and started Barstool, Barstool Sports. Um, you know, he put out a tweet saying, you know, racing is looking for a, 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 a influencer. I own horses. I'm at the racetrack. I know and love the game. I'm enthusiastic. I'm right here. He's right. He's right. I mean, he is the kind of guy that can maybe bring new people and new blood into the game. Um, Mike Rapole, the you know self-appointed commissioner of racing or, or, or the NTA, um, he's made a lot of noise. He's on Twitter a lot. Um, hasn't actually done anything. Uh, trying, I give him credit. I hope he succeeds. Um, I, I really do. He's got some good ideas. He's got some not so good ideas, but everybody does. And we've all, all got opinions, but a lot of what he says, I support would love to see happen, but it's not really happening. It's just being talked about, but in his defense and, and, and Hey, he's just getting started. Maybe he'll get some momentum. Maybe he'll get some traction. Um, maybe he's not self-serving or self-interest. You know, maybe he, he you know, he, no, I don't think anybody can question his love and passion for the game. But so far, not much is happening. Uh, I think that David Portnoy's tweet that, you know, he, and, and I don't know much about him or Boston Sports. I met him for a couple of minutes, talked to him. Seemed like a really, really nice guy. I know he's got a big passion for the game from some of the stuff I've seen on TV, which is not a lot, you know. But um, <clears throat> he did go to my friend's pizzeria um, and do a show about it, and I hear he was he was pretty cool. So, uh, <clears throat> so you, 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 you know, I think I think he'd be a better fit than the person that they chose. He certainly couldn't be any worse. We certainly couldn't be any any worse off than we are. Uh, as far as uh you know racing uh and where it's at you know uh we've got our issues and we we, we 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 need to fix what's broken in the sport and we also need to grow the sport but we can't lose sight of and what you know i've been saying this for 10 years publicly and for about 10 years privately before that but you know racing has to recognize okay it has to recognize who its customer is and it's the gambler whether whether they like it or not they are in the gambling business, not the entertainment business, not show business. Uh, it's 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 a gambling money game. It's a skill game, uh, and it has to be treated and marketed as such, and marketed to people that are interested in that. You know, if you don't know who your customer is, how are you going to take care of your customer? And if you can't take care of your customer, someone else will. So I'm tired of talking about that, but that was my take on it. Um, Pegasus is a little bit of a different day than most of the big days. It's a little bit more, and I think, uh, you know, First and the Stronix have, have, have kind of designed it and pushed it that way to be a little bit more of a spectacle, entertainment, celebrity kind of kind of vibe and feel to it. And that's great, but that's not what racing is all about, and that's not what's going to bring people to the racetrack on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday or have anybody open up any ADW accounts. If you think that, my best advice is don't hold your breath. Um, I, you, you know, I, I happen to see some people from, from Heisa there that I know. I had uh, Lisa Lazarus on my show in the past. I had uh, the two gentlemen from Hi Wu, uh, uh, Ben and Sean, on my show uh, recently. Uh, Happened to run into all of them at at at, at the uh, Pegasus World Cup, said hello and and shared my observation that uh, it was the least crowded Pegasus that I can remember, uh, and they all asked me you know why I thought that was and my answer was the same I I certainly don't know 
um, could have to do with the pricing, which has gotten high, and it could have to do with just the state of where our sport is. And, you know, that that's that. I, I, I hope, as all of they did, uh, that that's not the reason, but uh, it is what it is. Now, let's talk a little football closing out because the conference championships are over. Uh, the Super Bowl is coming up. We know who's playing. And here, here are my quick thoughts on that uh, for you to do with what you will. Uh, I liked both underdogs and both um, road teams to win on Sunday. I liked the Chiefs to win outright in Baltimore. And I liked the Lions to win outright in San Francisco. And I did bet that parlay for both of them to win. So you're thinking I lost, but I didn't because uh, I was lucky enough. I was going to say smart enough, but it wasn't, it wasn't really smart. It turned out to be the smart move. I was lucky enough to cash out my parlay shortly after the half in the Lions game because what I did was, um, and I don't really bet sports a lot, but now that it's legal in Florida, I got the app with with, with Hard Rock. Uh, so I've been fooling around with it. And I bet Sinner to win the Australian Open, okay? He was a huge prize because everybody thought it was Novacek or Alcarez and nobody else could win. I bet Sinner, the German guy from Italy, because I thought he was a dangerous player and his odds were very, very big, especially considering – you know, how much those guys and a couple of guys right under them w w were taken. So I didn't even know I won because when I went to the Pegasus World Cup, I forgot that the finals were, were that day. I think they played it Saturday night. And I didn't know until I went into my account on Sunday before the games just to take a look at my parlay and said, oh, wow, I got extra money because I made the bet on the Australian Open. Lucky me. Okay. So after the Chiefs won, the Lions were like plus 275 or something like that. Um, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to bet more on that game alone too. So I was alive with them in the parlay, and I bet them anyway. Now, at around a little bit after the half, I look and see, and the cash out was so big. It was not – I mean, it was just – it was too big to uh, – you know, it was too close to what I was going to win on the parlay not to take it. I mean, I said, you know what? I'm going to cash out. This doesn't make sense. If the 49ers somehow make a miraculous comeback and knock me out of everything, I'm going to kick myself in the butt because there's not that much more money, even though it looked like a lock at that point. And I guess that's why they did it because these books are very, 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 very sharp. Those cash outs, they change – with every down sometimes. So I said, you know what? Boom, hit the cash out on the parlay, hit the cash out on the other one. And lo and behold, uh, the Lions wind up lose, losing the game. Uh, I think uh, one of the fourth down tries was definitely a mistake. The dropped pass definitely, you, you know, hurt the Lions. But, you know, the Super Bowl, the Chiefs have become – the kind of team with all of this Taylor Swift nonsense and Travis Kelsey nonsense and, uh, you know, like she's going to maybe start her concert in Japan the day before early, which is not really fair to the fans who maybe have to work and are rushing to the concert. Now they're going to start it early so she can, you know, private jet back to the Super Bowl, whatever. But the NFL probably wants her there. They'd probably like to have her around all week to, to influence or whatever you call it for, for them. Um, and they don't even have to pay her for it, but uh, not that she needs the money anyway, although I don't like to count other people's money. Who knows what what, what anybody's situation really is. Um, but I doubt that she's hurting or really needs that. But in any event, I'm sure they would love to have her. But my thought is they've become the Chiefs, the kind of team that you almost kind of root against with all of that nonsense. But Mahomes in the big games is great. Uh, the Chiefs are great. Andy Reid is great. I think the 49ers were lucky to get past Green Bay. They were lucky to get past Detroit. They could have lost both of those games. I see that as they were exposed a little bit. KC came in and played tough against teams I thought had a chance to beat them. 
Buffalo being one of them. I mean, they just they're just a big game team. They're like Irad on the big days, uh, Bob Baffert on the big days, Chad Brown on the big days, Cool Moore, Ryan Moore on the big days. Um, tough to go against Mahomes. Now, after the game, when they put the Super Bowl lineup, the Chiefs were getting two and a half points. I said, wow. That's, you know, I don't even want the points. I'll take the money line. And at that point, they were plus 110. I said, ah, I'll decide what I'm going to do in the morning. I shouldn't have waited because I think they're one. They're getting one point now. And I think they're minus 110. And uh, the Niners are minus 120. So my opinion, if you like the Chiefs, bet now. Because I think that. By game time, they're probably going to be a one point, one and a half point favorite. I think that's how much money is going to come on, come in on them, and the sharp money is going to roll in on them. And I do believe the Chiefs are going to beat the 49ers and win the Super Bowl. Uh, so that's my prediction, and I do think they're going to do so. Well, I wouldn't say for sure as a favorite, but it, let me put it this way. It would not surprise me if the game by game time winds up pick them or the Chiefs a, a favorite. I will be a little surprised if the Niners stay the favorite. Um, I do think the Chiefs are going to wind up the favorite. So there you have our Pegasus takeaways, our horse racing marketing tidbits, uh, and uh, – a little NFL talk for the Super Bowl. So thank you, everybody, for watching. The Thorograph shows, you got to check them out. The Sure Bet Coffee Plays of the Day, you got to check them out. Uh, if you're lazy and tired and don't want to handicap, FatBaldGuyRacing.com sponsored us for the Pegasus. Their commercial is running on the channel right now. Uh their banner was on the Pegasus videos and interviews that we did. Check out Dan Cronin, fatballguyracing.com. He'll do the work for you. Um, if you're not a Tracking Trips member, why not? You either got to hate money, hate winning, or like losing. There ain't no other reason. So uh, ride with us. Uh, membership definitely has its benefits and privileges. So... Uh, that's all we got. Ciao for now. With some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING. Get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Tracking trips with Pick 6 King, John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes. Spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends. Horses to watch and favorites to fade. Ten fakes, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit PassTheWire.com and we'll see you in the winner circle. Remember, nobody does it better.
Number one is Mo Donegal by Uncle Mo. And they're off in the Remsen. As they come on for the finish, and it's going to be tight here in the Remsen. Mo Donegal. Mo Donegal bearing down on the outside. It's Mo Donegal and early voting. And it is Mo Donegal to win the Wood Memorial. And it will be Mo Donegal to win the test of the champion, the Belmont Stakes. Does it better?